Hi and welcome back to another Mr. Talbot Maths video and in this week's video we have got four circles uh, that are touching uh, each other uh, and we have got circles with a radius of 2, a radius of 3, a radius of 4 as you can see on the diagram. Uh, like I've written down as well, it's not drawn to scale so uh, you know it doesn't necessarily look like this so just bear that in mind when you're solving it uh, but it's just the fact that these circles are touching each other in this like, formation and we have got the radii uh, or the radius of three of the circles and we want to work out the radius of the fourth one. Okay, uh, pause the video now if you want to have a go at this problem. Otherwise, I'm going to show you my solution. So, the first thing that I did with this is that I drew on the radii. That's always the you know a really good idea to do when you've got circles uh, because that is something which uh, ultimately you'll probably be able to use. So, put the radii on uh, and it looks like this. So I've got kind of two triangles at the moment. And the next thing I thought, well, um, put some labels on them. So that's seven, because three out of four, that's going to be six. Two out of four, uh, that's going to be five, because it's two out of three. Okay, then I label the other side. So that was four plus R. And this one has to be two plus R, because I've got a radius of two and a radius of R. So the next thing I thought is, well, I've got some numbers here and I've got some things in terms of R's, uh, can I work out some angles? So I started looking at these angles here because that might help me later on to work out the R's. Uh, because if I can work out them, then I might be able to use them in some way to work out the ang some of the angles in the other triangle. Well, that was my thought at least anyway. So to do that, I'm going to need to use inverse cosine rule, which is this thing. Okay, so that's the cosine rule, just rearranged so I can work out the angle, and I've called the angle theta here, because that's normally what you label an angle as. Uh, so I'm going to use that, and uh, I decided to work out uh, the angle on the bottom left of this triangle, first of all. Uh, not sure why, I mean, I was just trying to work out all of them, to be honest. So I worked out that one, and I got an angle of 57.121 degrees. Okay. So then I put that on my diagram, and the next thing that I wanted to do is then work out one of the other angles, because if I could do that, I can then work out the third angle, and then I thought, well, I'll just go from there. So then I used uh, the, the values B and C and A, obviously, for the third angle, or second angle, sorry, the bottom right angle, the bottom right angle uh, of this left hand most triangle. So that gave me an answer of 78. Four, six. Again, so I put that on my diagram and then I used that to work out the top angle. So the top angle was 44.41. Okay, right. And then I got to a point where I was like, hmm, how, where do I go with this? What do I do? And I know because I've seen some problems like this before, which is why it's useful to do more and more of these problems. Practice, practice, practice. And you, what you'll find is you're learning techniques. So I then decided to look at I've basically got these parallelograms, uh, bottom left, bottom right, with a 3 and the 2, and then the 2 and the R. Uh, so I decided to cut that up into a rectangle and a triangle. So I put this uh, horizontal line going from the centre of my uh, radii 2 circle uh, to, well, basically across where it meets the radii for that uh, 3 radius circle. Okay, and then I thought, well, I've got some lengths. I've got the 1 and the 5. Uh, I could use Pythagoras to work out that horizontal distance, but I could also use it to work out an angle. Now, the reason I wanted to work out this angle is because then I can find out how far away uh, this side length 6 is from the basically vertical, right? the, the, the difference in that. Now, doing that, working out this angle here, uh, is inverse sine of 1 over 5, because I'm going to do opposite over hypotenuse, well, that's sine, and I'm working out the angle, so you do inverse sine. Uh, and that gave me 11.536. Now, interestingly, the sum of those two angles gave me 90 degrees. Now, that means that the 6 from the centre of my radius 2 circle to the centre of my radius 4 circle, that has to be 90 degrees with the horizontal, which means it's basically vertical. It's completely vertical up. So this pink circle sits, you know, exactly on top of the, the kind of greeny blue circle, or well, the green circle we'll call it, exactly on top of that. So then what I decided to do is make a new diagram. So I made my new diagram look like this. 
and then again put the radii on put my radii on okay label my radii so I've got my twos and my threes and my fours and as you can see it's got to have this symmetry to it because obviously there's symmetry in circles infinite symmetry um, and th therefore the way these are touching exactly in two places and with um, that horizontal line at the base that right hand circle by symmetry had to have a radius of three okay so that's my answer r is equal to three all right so because of my answer highlight it in some way underline it put a box around it but that's pretty neat i hope you like that video and if you did why not check out one of the other ones just over here and why not subscribe that'd be a good idea anyway i'll catch you in the next one see ya